Okay, so you've gone through the process of finding a math IA topic and you've landed on probability as your focus of the math content. Well, you've come to the right place because this video is for you. So what does a math IA focused on probability look like? Before we get to that, let's talk about why you chose probability as your mathematical topic to begin with. The first option could be is that you're curious about probability. You like, to, you like the idea of probability. You've always found it intriguing, this idea of chance or this idea of predicting the future based on, on repeated performances. Maybe that's your thing. Maybe that's what you're really finding passionate. You want to use mathematics to describe something that occurs in your life. Well, that's the whole point of the IA, is that you're going to use mathematics to, to describe this, and maybe probability is the best way to describe what it is that you're looking to do. Or you want to use data or theory to, to predict a future outcome. As I just said, maybe you're using this probability, maybe you're using the theoretical probability that you've talked about or seen in class. You wanna say, well, you know what? I could apply that to something that I do. That's something that I find interesting. Cool, but before we get into how you're gonna apply probability and what aspects you're gonna bring in, let's think about what the IA is actually all about. Remember, the IA is about your thinking and your understanding of the topic that you're discussing. That's exactly it. It's about your thinking and your understanding. It's not just about you doing a bunch of calculations. It's not just about tree diagrams or tables or whatever you're going to use for this. But what it's going to be about is how you think about the mathematics, how you think about probability, and how you're applying it. The process in getting from raw data to conclusion. How did you get your data? Did you use a survey? Did you gather data from somewhere else? Are you just talking about theoretical probabilities? Maybe you're talking about experimental probabilities where you're doing the same process over and over and you're looking at what is the relative outcomes of this, uh, this experimental probability? How did you go through that process? And, and what, uh, what issues did you get there? What was that process of getting the raw data to your end conclusion? And just remember that it's rarely about the answer. It's almost actually never about the answer. I mean, yes, it is, but really it's about how did you get from point A to point B? How did you get from your idea through the whole process and to the end. If you had an idea of what the, if you had a hypothesis of what was gonna be coming out of this and it didn't work out, that's okay. You're not writing a college level dissertation for your PhD. You're just trying to say, here's what I think is gonna happen and yeah, it happened or you know what? It actually didn't happen. That's all right. Stick with it. It's okay to be wrong. As long as you're using the mathematics and you're going through the proper thinking process to get from, again, point A to point B, the beginning to the end. So what does that mean? Well, you should discuss theoretical probability versus experimental probability. Why are you using one over the other? Uh, should you use both? Uh, what are the key aspects of each of these things? You want to show your knowledge about the different aspects of probability. The data gathering process, if it's applicable. Again, you might be just working on theoretical probability, but you might be also working on it some kind of experimental probability where you've gone through the process of repeating the same activity or the same uh, experiment over and over to get that relative frequency, to get that probability, to then apply it to whatever it is that you're investigating. And definitely any conditional aspects of your investigation. Conditional probability is a way to bring in some extra complexity to your IA to say, well, if this happens, then I have this probability, but if this happens, then this I have this probability. And bringing in that condition uh, adds a layer of complexity that helps you show your further understanding of probabilities. Now, here's my big warning, and this is my warning for all of my students when they choose to do probability. Are you sure probability is the right one to go? Because when you start getting into conditional probabilities, when you start getting into actually applying probabilities, it can get really complex really, really fast. I remember when I was going to university and I was taking some classes and it had probabilities in there, it got really complicated really fast. So make sure that what you're doing is not too easy but not too complex because you gotta find that sweet spot because you could really quickly get yourself in over your head. So, you know, take probability with a seed of warning. Seed of warning, is that a way to say it? Heed my warning, heed my warning. Heed my warning with probability. It can be a tough topic area to focus on. 
So with that said, how do you show your knowledge? Visual representations are a great way to show what you know. Doing a tree diagram, doing a table, doing a two-way table where you've got multiple things that you're looking at at the same time. These are all great ways to demonstrate your understanding of the probability layout, the way that probabilities can work within each other. Um, and it's just a, a nice little add-on for, uh, for you showing your understanding. Conditional probabilities. I've already said you want to use conditional probabilities for sure. Combinations versus permutations and why you would choose one over the other. Some probability situations order matters in which things happen. Other probability explorations, the order doesn't matter what happens. This is the difference between combinations and permutations. There should be some level of discussion that you're showing that you know the difference between the two and that you know that you should be using permutations or combinations or both, however the case might be but you're understanding that there are differences in how these probabilities can be found and that you're going to be using the right one. Expected values or expected outcomes. Now this is kind of where I would expect, expected, uh, for your IA to go. If you're working on this, you should have something that you're shooting towards. It shouldn't just be an analysis of, hey, what's the probability of this happening? Because that's usually pretty straightforward. So you want to find a way to apply it and find that expected outcome like, we, like you cover in the curriculum. And then, of course, the limitations of the process or mathematics that you're using in your IA. You always want to talk about the limitations. Now, with a lot of IAs, you might have to say, you know what, I'm not going to consider this piece, so that's going to be a limitation. I know this piece exists, but it further complicates what I'm doing and what I'm analyzing. So based on my level of understanding, based on where I'm at with the mathematics, I'm going to, I'm going to have to set this piece aside and I'm only going to focus on this. Again, that's okay. That's you recognizing your own limitations, but making sure that you're being very thorough in the mathematics that you're going to do with probabilities. So make sure that you're always discussing those limitations. And really the bottom line of what the IA is all about is your thinking and understanding. I can't stress that enough. It's about how you think about the process, how you apply mathematics, how you're applying the correct mathematics, and you're understanding what you're actually doing. It's okay, I, again, I can't say this enough, it's okay if, you, if what you think happened starting at the beginning doesn't end up at the end, uh, just as long as you're showing a logical thought process through the whole IA. And as I just mentioned, the process of getting from the raw data to the conclusion. Again, the thinking, the understanding, the process, how you're getting from this place to this place, using mathematics in the proper and appropriate way. Hopefully I haven't scared you away from probability, um, but if, if you're not quite sure, check out this playlist here where I go through all the different types of uh, mathematical IAs that you can go through with modeling or calculus or probability or statistics. And maybe uh, you'll get a different idea or a different approach for your IA if probability is starting to sound a little bit not your jam. I hope that was helpful. And if it was, share this with a friend. I'm sure some of the other folks in your class are also struggling on their IA topics. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.